another episode of Heart of the Matter. Today we are getting to the Heart of the Matter with Basha Johnson. And just in case you are not familiar with Heart of the Matter, this is a platform where we get past the facade of social media and I got it all together. This is a platform where we allow people to share their stories, talk about topics that are taboo and not so social media friendly. We want to allow you to create community and find your story in someone else's and connect and know that you can overcome any and all obstacles. So without further ado, let's get to Basha's story. Welcome back to Heart of the Matter. If you are just joining us, we are getting to the Heart of the Matter with Basha Johnson. Basha is a stylist and I just think she's just like one of the most creative um, individuals I've ever met. She looks 12, but she's not. <laughs> anyway, we are going to talk from the subject of growing up in a single parent home and how that has pushed her to rise to having her own salon and living the life of her dreams. So with all of that said, I am going to allow Basha to introduce herself really quick and just tell you about her salon, what she does, and um, then we'll get into single motherhood and why she feels that it drove her to this place. So Basha. Hey y'all. How are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm Basha. Got Basha. You see that shirt? I got Basha. Do you got Do Basha? You? <laughs> um, I did grow up in a single parent household uh, with two older brothers and my mom would come home with magazines and pit- picture magazines and tell me to do her hair just like the picture and it would take hours but I would get it done. So I've always been pretty creative and um all about hair life do you feel like you ever had a moment where you stopped having a love for doing hair well i just it was just something to do i learned to love it after beauty school Mm -hmm. like i only went to beauty school because it was my side hustle i was doing hair i worked it i had like four jobs (laughs) i babysat i worked at papa i worked at hollister i worked at victoria's secret and i did hair on the side so it was just something to do and in all those locations that i worked in that was my recruiting like you need your hair done you need your hair done. and it was one time too many that people would ask me if i had my license gotcha and that was the only thing that encouraged me to go to hair school because i was in regular college majoring in drama like i loved acting and modeling and stage plays and stuff like that so that was what i was just was going to school for i didn't want to be a hairstylist but i was running and so when I went to uh, school for it, my goal was, let me go to school, get my license. Once I get my license, I'll go back to doing what I want to do. And this there's something to do. I'll still do it. But I really don't want to be a hairstylist. And I went to school, got my license, learned so much. And then they also was educating us on how much money you can make. They get paid for this, like real money, like lawyers doctors like income like career hmm i guess i might just pursue this a little more so when i graduated i had five job offers nice so that's nice, nice, nice. that's beautiful that's what i did that's beautiful <laughs> so tell me let's go back to um the single mom um mm-hmm. aspect of it do you feel that having a single mom drove you more than if you would have had both parents in the home I can't speak for both parents because I didn't have it. So I don't know what it would be like having both parents. I have a lot of aunts and uncles that are married Mm -hmm. and my grandparents were married for 51 years. Like I have examples, but I didn't live in the household with them. So I don't know the difference I would have been or what would would have driven me more. But my hustle came from seeing my mom struggle because Mm. she was working 18 jobs and she was trying to make ends meet but she was making sure we had a roof over our head we never uh we were never on welfare we've never um lived in the projects she always made sure we had a nice home gotcha i just knew i wanted to be somebody i knew i wanted to have my own i knew i didn't want to have to borrow from nobody i didn't want to have to have too many jobs i didn't want monday to come around i'm like oh it's Monday, got to yes. start to, got to go to work. I didn't want that. I wanted to, whatever I did in life, to love it and be happy about it. And 
Because I feel like that's life. You're living when you're doing something that you love versus existing and you're just working just to pay bills. Real I didn't want to do that. I love that. Do you feel that your mom instilled that in you? Yeah, because her struggling, like she couldn't enjoy the fruits of her labor. I know I grew up with a single mom and that's my thing. I, I remember I always used to say to her, I never want to grow up. Because they just carry the brunt of everything, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. it always looks stressful. That's the word. Um, yeah. And I think that was the thing that used to scare me about growing so, up. So. With you, um, what would you say was the biggest aspect of as far as struggle-wise or seeing your mom go through certain things that you feel that kind of kept that fire burning? Um, She just was always working. She was always working. Yeah. Like, I remember her schedule because she would pick me up from school, pick me up to take me to school after she worked her night shift. So she worked mm. 11 to 7, come home, pick me up. I went to school in Fort Worth. We lived in Arlington. So that was like a 20, 30 minute drive. Gotcha. Dropped me off at school. Then she would go to her other job from 8, I think it was about 9 to 1. And it was like a private patient because she was a nurse. So she had a private patient do that, pick me up from school come home, take a nap. Then she had like a four to seven private oh, wow. patient. And then she would come home, nap. And then she would go to work from 11 to seven. All again. Mm -hmm. So that nice. was like a cycle of seeing her. I mean, she would try to be there. Right. But as a kid, you don't understand. Like, oh, she's never in my game. Oh, she's never here. She's never. Right. When you grow up, you kind of understand a little more the reasons why she wasn't there. Right. It still hurts. You can't change that. Of but course. I knew when I had kids, I wanted to be able to have the type of job that I can choose to go to work or be there. That's what God Bosch is about. Like, if I, ah. if I commit, I'm going to be there. I can change my schedule. I can work it. I yeah. can work around that and I I that. make sure I'm there. So, because I know that impact of seeing somebody that your loved one in the audience or your loved one showing up at your birthday yes. party or your loved one just walking in and like, oh, you came. Like it yeah. does something for me to do that for others because I know what it does to me when I see my people show up. Okay, so, so, what would you say was the best lesson that your mom ever taught you or best advice she's ever given you? Um. Well, the main thing that she's in, that she focused on is just waiting to marriage. Mm. Like, don't be out here getting it in, okay? <laughs> because you could get caught up and you could have kids so and you'll be in the same situation that she was in. And she didn't want that. She didn't have the same type of love that she gave me growing up. So she went a different route and she had three kids and she was a single parent. And that was from when she was in her teen years up until now. I mean, she's still a single parent, but not really, you know, because we're on right. our own. But she did all of that all those years. So I tried to wait. <clears throat> So <laughs> I, 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 I held on to my goods till I was about 24, but I really thought that That's I was going to make it. And commendable. <laughs> well, thank you. I really thought I was going to make it because I know my mom really wanted that for me. She didn't want me just giving it up. And then having brothers. They didn't want that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the main things because she really didn't want me to have kids at a young age. She really didn't want me to ha have the same struggles that she had. So that was one of the major lessons that I stuck to. Like, okay, let me do right. Let me not get caught up. Even though I didn't understand it at a young age, but gotcha. she was telling my brothers and I'm in the same area. Like we're at the kitchen table and we're having the talk. The that was one of the, the main things. And then working hard for what you want so that you yeah. don't have to call anybody asking for nothing. That's beautiful. I know you had mentioned about having people show up for you. Mm -hmm. I know how that is. I'm like a big old kid inside when my mom shows up to stuff that mm -hmm. I'm doing. I, I don't know. You're right. It does mm -hmm. something um, to you. So if you were to give advice to single moms who are working all the time, what would that advice be? If you're going to make a commitment, stick to it. I'd rather you say, <clears throat> I'll try or let me look into it versus I'll be there. I'll be there. Because you saying you'll be there, even as an adult, you say you'll be there because I'm the type that if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. I'm going to walk in. I can't tell you what time I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> right. But as a kid, we're looking for you. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm running track, but I'm looking. Is my mom there? Like... It just does something for a kid to see their parent there. And um, 
because that's that's our goal in life is to please our parents because who else are we pleasing besides god you know but sometimes our earthly parents is like we want them to be proud of us so that's our everyday stride so i would just tell you guys that stick to it if you say you're gonna tuck them in like be there to tuck them in because they're looking forward to that and maybe their night sleeping isn't going to be the same or i'll be home for dinner like be home for dinner because they're looking forward to that. Did you and your mom ever go through a rough patch when you were in your teens? And <laughs> tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> we went through a rough patch when I was in my teens, but not really. We more so went through the rough patch in my 20s because mm -hmm. that's when I started knowing it all because I got my boyfriend and I started, you know, doing things that grown people do when you're married. Right. And so... And you can't tell you <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> So in teen oh years, I wasn't sexually active. I liked guys, but my mom was my best friend. So my friends would talk about me all the time. Like, you told your mama that? Because we talked. Like I said, we had the talk, even though I didn't understand it at a young age. We always right. had the talk. So when I was old enough to understand the talk, I could talk to you. So if a guy kissed me or hold my hand or grab my booty, I could be like, mom. Like, we would talk. Yeah. And my friends would be like. You told your mama that? Oh, nice. Nah, I'm very like a let's keep it real yeah. type of thing. Um, and you can ask my girls. I always with okay, well, what you going to do when he start filling on your booty? Mm -hmm. What you going to do when he start sticking his tongue down your throat? Mm -hmm. What Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think it's so important. And that was something that me and my mom had in our relationship was she always, 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 always kept it real mm -hmm. 100 mm -hmm. with me. As far as relationships, I could go to her and ask advice. And I valued that. But the one place where we lost it was I'm like very big on um, if I tell you something or confide in you about something that stays between the two of yeah, us. So we should, yeah. And so she went and told my sister about something that I confided in her. Mm -hmm. And then after that, that broke our trust. Mm -hmm. I never really had those kind of conversations with her anymore. Right. Um, I missed it, but it was for me, trust is a big thing and mm -hmm. it still is 100%. So... With that being said, is it anything, any part of you that you feel like ever kept you from sharing things with your mom? Well, I stopped sharing when I got my boyfriend. He and I started dating like 23, 20, 20, 22, 23, something around there. I can't remember. I tried to delete that. <laughs> but you can't. So, um, but like I said, I lost my virginity at 24 and we, we lived together for a whole year before we even went there. And it's like she was always preaching. And it, 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 it was like she was talking to me like she already know what was happening. Yeah. And we hadn't because I had my, I, I was very clear on I'm waiting. Right. And the more she talked down on him or what he, oh, I know his type and all of those things. It's like, that's fine. You know his type, but you haven't even tried to get to know him. You just know yeah. his type. So the person that you know versus the person that I know, I'm kind of, it's kind of a battle. Because yeah. I'm trying to defend him because I'm going by what he shows me. And you're already like, I'm good. I don't need to meet him. We only, I don't need to get to know him. And none of those things. And it's like, so, and then he was very manipulative. So it's kind of like, he's telling me one thing and then she's telling me something else. So therefore, yeah. she's pushing me more towards him. And he was like, well, your mama don't like me and this and this. And so... It's like us against him, us against my mom right. at the end of the day. Right. So he ended, it and it. Mm -hmm. like, so it ended up being <laughs> very hard to like talk to my mom when I needed her. So when he and I was really going through it, I didn't want to call my mom. Gotcha. Mama knows best for sure. Mama knows best, but I didn't want to call her because I didn't want the I told you so. Right. And I didn't want she was right. Like I just didn't want that. Even though she was, because mama does know best, but sometimes you got to allow me to learn my lessons and I'm rebellious because yeah, I want to learn it on my own. I want to see for myself because the person that I met, he's been amazing to me. He was my, we worked together. Right. So we worked together. Everything was cool at work. Then we lived together. Everything cool at home. We traveled. It was like, what is it that you see, mom? Because he's great. Yeah. Now when he got some is when he started switching up on me. And I was like, okay, maybe she was right. But yeah. I still wouldn't admit it. So that's when our gap and our barriers and our getting into it happened. Yeah. Because I thought I knew more than 
I did and I didn't. And, you know, a lot of people experience their per puppy love, their first love, their first relationship, their first mm -hmm. encounter with sex in high school. I went through those emotions in my early adulthood, my 20s. So in my mind, when you get in your 20s, you should be thinking about marriage and family and all of that. So that was the only reason why I crossed that line because I'm thinking about marriage and family with this guy. Right. But then I started, so I was just a late bloomer, gotcha. late bloomer in the, in that area. So that's what pretty much put the barrier between she and I. And then once we broke up and I was really hurt, I can't say that she said, I told you so, but it was like, I told you so. Mm. And as parents, I know you're trying to protect us, but sometimes your protection hinders yeah because we still want to learn we still want to grow we want to learn and a lot of my life lessons i learned from seeing what other people went through right but you still don't think you're going to go through it just like drunk drivers you True. drinking you driving you don't think it's going to happen to you it. yeah but it does it can and you know i don't regret it because it happened but i tell all my clients that have daughters when they start going through like let her talk to you let her be open don't yeah. always preach because she's coming to you because she wants to talk to you. So when you get to preach it in her mind, I ain't telling her nothing else. Ugh, I'm not even doing that. Right. And that's all she think I'm doing. Like that's what's going through our minds while you're talking to us. And so therefore that's going to put that barrier in between the relationship. Because right now, social media, yeah. everybody's naked, everybody having sex, everybody doing all these yes. things. And that's what's fun. That's what's popular. That's what they look for. And that doesn't mean that you have to do that. And that doesn't mean every girl is doing that. So if she wants to be with her boyfriend, it doesn't mean that she just want to go and mess with him and have sex and do all this sneaky stuff. She just wants to be with her boyfriend. That She just want to hold his hand. And so you automatically jump to, I know what y'all doing. That's, <laughs> that's going to make her feel like, but yeah. well, we're not. And it's going to cause, because it makes her feel like you don't trust her. Ah, that's a good point. Okay, because I was going to ask you, what do you think? Because, of course, when we're in mom mode, we're in mom mode. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to sometimes, even though you think that you're being like, let me be cool, but I need to make sure that I'm mm -hmm. being mom, but not being your friend. Right. And <clears throat> I want to be cool, but right. I also don't want you to get it twisted. Right. What is something that you can say to a mom to make them notice when those little signals are happening so that we can like catch ourselves and, and pull back. I guess you just gotta go by the vibes and the body language. Yeah. I, I'm learning because I have a brother who's now 18. So that's been my baby. And, <laughs> and my hashtag is sister mom because I'm sister, but I took the role of a mom I financially for sure. And then every week since he was little, I pick him up. We take, we go on a little date. Um, I remember when he and I started having a talk and they'll be open if you just let them. Yeah. And he was so open. He told me some details that I don't even really want to know. Like with my girls, they, they would tell me that just my reactions alone mm -hmm. would hinder them from talking to exactly. me. Exactly. And I didn't realize that I was having those reactions. Mm -hmm. So then I had to go back and say, okay, listen, I may freak out a little bit. <laughs> In my body language, I may be freaking mm -hmm. out. But that doesn't mean that I don't want you to tell me. Yeah. And sometimes I just need a few days or a moment to process our conversation because some, truth be told, some of my greatest fears for you is happening. Yeah. And I, I don't really realize that I'm <laughs> reacting a certain way. Sometimes I would yeah. tense up and not know it. Mm -hmm. Or I would be like, oh my God, what happened? What, you know? Yeah. And but if you give me a moment or just give me some time to process it, you don't. Then, then I can process it and then I can come back and we can have further conversation or I can take a moment to swallow. In that moment, I had to learn how to fix my reactions mm -hmm. or fix my... It's all about seizing the opportunity. Yeah. So it's not every day they're going to talk to you and tell you what they did in school, who tried right. to holler at them, like my little brother, who was in his phone. He not always want to show me what the girl texted. Right. He's not always... But when he does... You have to be ready for it because they're they don't want to express they don't want to tell you nothing. Smoke, but <laughs> they don't want to tell you anything because yeah. they're teenagers and they view you as adults. Cause right. My little brother, he blocked me on Snapchat. He oh, was like, yeah. like when I went to go add him, I was like, why keep highlighting that? And so I asked oh. him, I was like, did you block me? He's like, yeah. 
Yeah, that's my my oldest daughter, Tori. She blocked me on Snapchat. I can follow her on Instagram, (laughs) but she didn't let me. She was like, no, because it gets ratchet. (laughs) It does, because I see her. And so I was like, okay, but (laughs) she's grown. I think one of the mistakes I made as a mom was wanting to correct my mistakes through her. Right. So if I can yeah. make her get it right, right, then I've redeemed myself. Yeah. Now that wasn't a conscious thing, but it was a subconscious thing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wanting, um, I'm having to allow her to be her because I know I was ratchet and we didn't have all the social media. My mama didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so once they do open up and let you know and expose themselves of what they did or how they did it and how many times they did it, you just kind of have to, oh, okay. Because I remember, and that's what made me help. Because you said you had that moment, it's your expressions, and you yeah. learned from it. So he actually told me, that's why I'm like telling you nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, ooh, I don't want that. I want right. him to want to talk to me. Exactly. If he doesn't talk to nobody else, I want him to know that I can yeah. call my sister. I can talk to my sister. And he knows there's a thin line between sister and mom. Because the mom side is, what the, right. the sister side? Oh, yeah? And so I had to play sure. that thin line between, especially if that, I think... You have to put the mom card away when they come express themselves to you. Yeah. When they want to talk to you and they just want to talk, they want to vent. They don't need. Sometimes I need warning. They don't want no advice. <laughs> they just want to talk. They want to vent. Then you can take your two days after that, all of that. Right. But sometimes if you take those two days, they don't want to talk about it in two days. True. You got to seize the opportunity right then. And at the True, end of the day, they don't want to disappoint you. For those parents that have their kids 24-7, when they do have that time, because they're teenagers, they don't want to talk to you all the time. They want to go to their room. They want to be with their friends. They want to do all that. But if they want to spend time with you, <laughs> there's something that you're doing yeah. and impacting them. Because I actually wanted to spend time talk with my mom. mom. My friends had boyfriends. So if I'm not with my friends, I was with my mom. And yeah. I was okay with it. Like, I had no shame. And I have some of my clients that are still the same way. They, yeah. they want to talk to their mom. They want to text their mom all the time. They actually miss their mom when they go out of town. They're texting. They're Snapchatting. Mom, look! You, do you like my outfit? And it's yeah. like, I love that because that's how I was. Nowadays, no. We're not, we're not like we were when I was in high school. And it's because I had to find my own way right and she still was trying to hold on to the little basha and i'm grown yeah (laughs) so So are you and your mom close now we are in a rough patch but i'm sure we'll get over it yeah Mm -hmm. it it always goes through a process it's a process so (laughs) when i introduced it we wanted to talk about just single momhood but it really has kind of morphed into this whole thing (laughs) um but i am putting together a tour a heart of the matter tour featuring the mother-daughter relationship Mm. And um, it's to help bridge the gap. So it's going to allow platform for the daughters to speak and then also the mothers to speak. And it's not just for teens. It's for adulthood all the way up. Mm. I see so many broken mother-daughter relationships. And so that you, and we can gain understanding because sometimes you can see from a different perspective. So even just me having this conversation with you, I'm learning things, even though I know that I've made mistakes as, as a mom or um, I did my best as a mom. And some things I would not change, some things I would change. But it's still just to allow that platform or just to learn little things that you're doing that you can do better or ways that we can better bridge the gap. The gap about Basha's floor is blue. It's like a marble blue. It's like the most beautiful thing. So I want you to tell a little bit about that, why it's blue, and because it's pretty awesome. Uh, (laughs) My lips are blue. Did you see that? Because Basha's favorite color is blue. But anyway, I'm like totally ribbing Basha today. Yeah. So the floors are blue marble, um, different color shades of blue, and they have a a few little imperfections that make them perfect. Um, But my favorite color is blue, and I knew I wanted blue floors. I think God had his eye on me to be my own boss because every salon that I worked in, worked for, wasn't having me. They didn't like my creativity. It was always a random reason why I get fired or let go or you can't work here no more. So um, this was the eighth one, which is eight new, new beginnings. beginnings. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> eight. To, um, so this is the eighth one and it was good because it's a new beginning and it has my name on it and it's Basha, which is funny because I grew up hating my name. So for me to put my name on everything is just crazy. Yay. And so, um, but the floors represent... Um, water and when the 
the contractor asked me like what kind of blue what do you mean by blue what color let me send you some examples and I was like I just want to be like Jesus and walk on water and then they got it because I wanted to walk in faith and not by sight so that's what the floors represent um walking in water walking in faith and not by sight like Jesus walked on water, water. walking faith hey yeah <laughs> I love it <laughs> tell them where they can find you websites how they can book if they want salons what services you offer those type things um I'm a hairstylist so I do pretty much all hair I love it when the others not us but the others ask me do I do hair do I do their hair and I'm like yes yeah. I do it all. So she does. And I she's do cuts. good at it. <laughs> I do cuts. I do color. Um, I'm not a braider, so I don't advertise braiding. But um, extensions, weaves, wigs. I make wigs on top of that. And then we have a makeup artist here. We have a lash tech. We have a microblading technician. Um, those are the services that we provide at Bosch's Beauty Lounge. And you can find us in Arlington. Um, it's 430 East Lamar Boulevard. Suite 112, Bosch's Beauty Lounge. Yes. You'll see it. And I'll float all of that stuff <laughs> down here at the bottom so you can definitely yes. go. Yes. And um, my uh, Instagram is Styles by Basha. And uh, my Facebook is Basha Johnson, B A S H I A Johnson. And got Basha. You could just hashtag it and everything can come up. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. And then website. Do you have a website? Uh, www.boshasbeautylounge.com. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you for your transparency and for being a guest on Heart of the Matter. <sighs> You're welcome. Yeah. <Yay. laughs> I will see y'all in the next episode of Heart of the Matter. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye.